Hi, this is Sarah from Posh Pooch Designs. And today's video is a companion video to go along with our new blanket. We're calling it the Pixel Graph Dog Blanket. You can use it for anything. It just has dog bones and dog paws on it. So I just called it that. For this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about charts, graphs. I'm going to talk to you about how to begin with the C2C corner to corner, how to change colors and how to decrease. You're going to need for this pattern, which is on the blog, and I will put that in the comments. I'll put that link in the comments. You're gonna need an eye hook and um, you're gonna need six different colors of Red Heart Love yarn or any worsted weight yarn will work. I'm just using Red Heart Love for this project and these colors. And all the colors are listed on the blog with the free pattern on it. Each square will measure 12 by 12 and the entire blanket will measure about 30 inches, 30 by 30 inches. So let's go ahead and get started. First, I wanna to talk to you about the graphs. On the blog, there are four graphs. And the way, uh, the way you read the graph is you begin working your C2C from this corner. And as I work a block, I mark it off. Then there's two, then there's three, and I mark it off. When I'm changing colors, I do like, for instance, these two are cream or white. I'll do those two, mark those off. Then I'll change colors and do the next, like here's brown, and I'll mark those off. So I just kind of do it that way. That's why some of them in the middle look a little bit jumpy because that's the way I do it to keep from getting lost. They're really easy to follow. The entire, each, each block is worked in a C2C, corner to corner, and I'm going to show you how I do it, um, which is pretty much the basic way of doing it. And that's how you're going to read a chart. The charts on the blog do have the numbers to help you. All right, so that's how we're going to read a chart. Now, we're going to begin working our C2C. So, you're going to begin, let me pop on my glasses so I can see my fingers a little better. All right, we're going to begin chaining six. So here's my slip knot. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now you've got six chains. You're going to work your first double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook. So one, two, three, four, and those first three chains become your first double crochet. So there's that one, and then you're gonna work two more so that you have four double crochets. And then chain six, two, three, four, five, six. And this is what it looks like. Turn it towards you so you can see a little better. Okay. Now we're going to work row two, so that's your first block. So then you're going to do the same thing because you put six chains on there. And one, two, three, four, we're going to double crochet, fourth chain from the hook, and then the next two. One, two, actually it's the next three because your, your chain three is your first double crochet, then you need three more double crochets. Then... And this is what you'll work throughout the project. You're going to see this little chain three we began with. You're going to slip stitch in that chain three and then chain three. One, two, three. So you've got two blocks made, one here and one here. And then in here, we're going to put three double crochets. One, two, three. So now it looks like this. And if you look, put it this way, you see here's your first block and here's your one, two second block. So that's row one and row two. One, two, three. Get a little more yarn here. Four, five, six. We'll do one more row so you can get an understanding. Fourth chain from the hook is your first double crochet. Then second double crochet, third double crochet. So you've got another block, chain three here, and one, two, three double crochets. Slip stitch in 
the chain, uh, chain three space, then chain three, and then three double crochets. One, two, three. Then again, slip stitch in that next chain three space. One, two, three. One, two, three. And we're at the end again. And here we go. We've got one, one, two, one, two, three. So that's row three. Let's go ahead and start row four. And I'm going to show you how to change um, colors on this one. So let me go ahead and get this one. Oops, jumped ahead of myself. One, two, three. Remember, we have to do six on the end and add that block by chaining or double crocheting. So we chained six, one double crochet, fourth chain, fifth chain, sixth chain for four double crochets. And then we, I twisted it, there we go. <laughs> then we slip stitch here We'll do this block and then I'm going to show you how to change colors with this one. Now, this is what I do. I put my first three double crochets and I do the first pull through, but I leave the two loops on here. And I've got my second color already and I'm going to pull that second color through those two loops, tighten it up a little bit, and then I usually hold like that. I'm showing you backwards so you can see what I'm doing there. Hold those strings and then you go to that next chain three and you loop that through for your uh, slip stitch. Chain three, one, two, three. Put your three double crochets. One, two, three. And we'll just finish out with this pink. Um, just so that you understand it a little better, you're on your last double crochet of that block. You leave those last two loops on and pull your new color through those two loops. Okay, now I'm going to, uh, one thing about working charts is you're not always going to cut your string. Now, if, if, um, if there's distance, I use several of the same colors. A lot of times I'll use, like even on the big blocks where you're beginning, you're using cream and then you're going to end up with cream. I use this one scheme, but I use the two ends so that they're not um, strung across the back. Kind of like using, if you've ever used like a bobbin or whatever uh, to make, I mean, you can use more than one ball, but I do it that way so I don't have to, you know, wind up the balls. Okay, so... Here's your color change by pulling it through those two loops. Now I'm going to show you how to start decreasing. Let's say this was the end of our, of our distance and it's time to start decreasing. What you're going to do is chain one, that's just a turning chain, helps you get a nice smooth start, and you're going to slip stitch in the top of those three double crochets. Just like that. And then you're going to go in that chain three space, slip stitch in one, two, three. And this is going to get give your edge. And as you go, and you'll do this on both ends for a square. If you're making a triangle, you don't do it at the exact same time, but we're making squares. And let me whip this up real quick for you. And I think I'll change colors again since I'm going back towards the white, just so you can see it. So we're on our third double crochet of the pink, and we've got the two loops. Now also remember when you're working with your block, you have a front and a back. Your back side is where you're going to pull all your strings so they can be, uh, you can weave them in later. 
okay? So I'm gonna pull my pink string to the back and then I'm going to pull back up on my white piece of string, or my white yarn, it's not string, okay? So I pulled it through those two loops, then I'm gonna go in that chain three, slip stitch, one, two, three, and keep going. I've, there's other techniques out there and they may work better for you, but I have really found that this works great for me. One, two, three, and it's also a good idea if you're not sure how to do the C2C corner to corner block uh, method to practice on a swatch like this. When I first uh, started learning it, I, I love to use this particular style to use up my leftover scraps, you know, as long as they're all worsted weight or, you know, all the same. Okay, so I'm going to show you again how to decrease. We're going to chain one, turn, slip stitch in those top three double crochets. Oops, missed it. There we go. Three. You see those? One, two, three. Slip stitch in that chain three. One, two, three. And this is, see how this has an edge now? And that's where your edge is going to go across. Same thing with this. Your edge is gonna go across. And eventually, as you decrease, you'll end up with another corner. And that's how you decrease. So we talked about the graph. The pattern has all the colors listed. It doesn't have square by square, because you need to follow the graph. We talked about how to start our corner to corner. We talked about how to change colors and how to decrease. And I hope that helps you out. And I hope you'll make a bunch of beautiful ones. Let me show it to you again real quick. There's a heart graph, a paw print graph, dog bone, and coffee. I had a hard time making the coffee graph. because so I, the, I do these on my computer and it was a lot of fun. So anyway, I hope this helps you out. Thank you.